This presentation is about tire wear. I'm going to talk about some of the tire wear patterns you'll see on tires so you can uh, diagnose and know what to tell the customer and know what causes them. So, the first thing we're going to talk about are inflation problems. Uh, inflation problems have to do with air pressure in the tire, and there's usually two types there's underinflation wear, and there's overinflation wear. Uh, anytime you run the tire to improper pressure, uh, you can cause the tire to wear abnormally. If it's underinflated, it wears on the outside edges, and it'll be on both sides, in and out. And overinflation tends to wear in the middle or on the uh, center of the tire. So as you can see, this one has tire wear on both the uh, inside and outside edge. This one has it only on the inside edge. If you look at what causes the type of wear, correcting inflated tires basically have a full contact pattern across the tread from one side to the other. When we underinflate the tire, it tends to sag down on the outsides, and that basically causes it to wear on those outside edges, so both sides of the tire will wear. If you overinflate it and put too much pressure, uh, it bulges the tire out in the center, and that's why you have center tire wear. This is a good example of a tire with uh, it's been ran with too much air pressure. You can see the center of the tire, uh, the tread's almost gone. This has been driven a while with it overinflated. Um, it's usually caused by people guessing at how much air they need in their tire. Uh, instead of using a tire pressure gauge, they look at it and kind of eyeball it. And when you do that, you're just guessing, and you could be too low or over. A lot of people look at the tire and think, hey, my tire looks low, especially in certain situations when you're setting uh, tire setting on different surfaces, and they'll think I need to add air, air when the tire is actually uh, already at spec. The way to fix this is to air depth specification to release what air is in it if it's too much, and uh, replace it if it's this bad, uh, or just tell them to run it until it needs to replace it. It did shorten the life of the tire. Here's the other examples of tires that are worn in the center tread. Uh, you can see this one's uh, down the center. Anytime you see this, that's a good indication that they've been running the tire with too much air. Uh, the only thing to do there, like I said, is use a tire pressure gauge and urge the customer to buy one. Uh, again, when you have uh, Outside edge wear, that usually means we're overinflated or we have, or, excuse me, that's underinflation. Uh, when we have underinflation, I should say underinflation, when we have underinflation, the tread basically sags down, the sidewall sags down, and we wear on the outside. Usually you'll see this more often, and the reason being is because anytime a tire gets a leak, an air leak, the pressure will be reduced and the tire will start running on these outside edges. Uh, the lower the pressure, the more severe the wear will be. Uh, the longer they go, it can damage the tire pretty severely. Uh, always when you see this, you know, remind your customer that he has a tire leak. He's got a leak. Could be a nail, could be something else, a uh, valve stem. But, uh, make sure you find the leak and then air it up to specifications to fix that. Like I said, that should be under inflation, not over inflation. I'm going to talk about edge wear next. There's two types of edge wear, and that's where we wear on one side of the tire only. Oh, uh, under inflation, we wear on two sides. This type of wear is only on one side. There's two things that can cause that. One of them is going to be uh, camber and one's going to be toe. Toe wear usually leaves a feathered edge. You can see in this instance this is toe wear, which is an alignment angle, and the edges basically on one side of the treads are a little higher than the other. Uh, over here you can see camber wear, it tends to wear off the edge. This is another alignment angle, and the only way to fix these two tire wear problems 
are to replace the tire and do an alignment. So make sure the customer knows he needs an alignment. Uh, this can wear severely or not severely depending on how far the alignment's out. Um, here is a good example of toe wear. Uh, the tire tends to, instead of be pointed straight down the road, which is toe, our toe measurement is our tires pointed straight down the road, a tire tends to be pointed off to the side. When it's pointed off to the side, it tends to scoot down the highway sideways. And when it does that, it'll basically wear off the leading edge and it'll leave a little lip on the backside. So you'll actually be able to feel that. You'll actually see a lip along one side of the tread and then it'll be smooth along the other edge of the tread. And you can see how this is smooth and you can kind of see how there's lips uh, on this part of the tread. Toe is probably the most critical tire wearing angle when doing alignment and it can wear the tire out extremely fast uh, even in only a few thousand miles if it's extremely bad. Um, just remember that term feathered edge that is related to toe. So anytime you see a tire wear pattern in, or a question and it mentions feathered edge you really need to think toe. Here's another example of the feathered edge. Um, you can see how it's risen up on this side. You can see how this side of the tread is smooth. Uh, basically this was scooting down the road sideways. It was rubbing off this and then the back side was kind of left with a, a sharp edge on it. So uh, if you run your hand across this you'll actually feel those little lips that are raised up or the edge of it. Now this is severe most of them you see won't be quite that severe. Most of them, uh, these ridges will be less noticeable um, when you put your hand on it and run it in and out. That's the real way to feel them. This type of edge wear is smooth and this is camber wear. It tends to be on one edge, not both, like the under inflation. And camber is the tilt of the tire in and out. You know, we want the tire standing straight up on the road so that the tread gets full contact with the road. If I tilt that tire out like I'm leaning a motorcycle uh, tire, it's going to roll over on the edge and start wearing that edge. The weight of the car and uh, traction with the road is going to cause that edge to wear out. When you see this, this vehicle needs to be aligned. Uh, the worse the camber is and the longer you go, the worse the wear will be. Some of them will be uh, less severe, some of them will be really, really sweet severe. This is a good example of camber wear and if you'll notice it doesn't look that severe at first glance but look at this side of the tire and then look at this side. If you'll notice these little tread grooves, the horizontal and slanted tread grooves, look over here and you can see the uh, slanted tread grooves are completely gone and the horizontal tread grooves are just about wore away. Um, this has been run with camber out for a while. It uh, has to have an alignment to get it fixed and this tire probably needs to be replaced. A lot of times if camber isn't bad you won't notice it until the tread wears down low like this one is. Um, when the tire is new and it wears camber you may not notice that one side of the tread is lower than the other side. Uh, when you see this, don't just put new tires on it. You really need to try to talk the customer into having an alignment, have his alignment check. A good way to tell the difference. They both cause similar wear, and that wear will be on the edges. Um, camber tends to be a little more farther to the edge than toe, but the real way to feel it is to run your hand in and out across the tire. Just reach up to the top of the tire, uh, and run a, your hand in and across. If you feel a catch coming out or those little ridges coming out, you you know it's toe wear. Uh, and you can feel them, you know, depending on if it's toe in or toe out, you can feel them going in or going out. Camber wear, on the other hand, will be more smooth and be a lot less, uh, you won't feel it when you run your hand across it because it'll be more smooth. Sometimes it's really hard to tell the difference between the two. Uh, you just have to put your hand on it and kind of feel real close to see which it is. 
either way it really doesn't matter uh, if you see either one of these wear patterns the uh, vehicle needs an alignment next thing I want to talk about is tire cupping tire cupping uh, is something that you know there's a lot of different causes for and it basically takes uh, the form of a lot of different wear patterns and shapes uh, this is typical cupped wear. You can see how there's a worn spot, an uh, unworn spot, a worn spot, an unworn spot, a worn spot, and they kind of alternate around the tire. If you run your hand across it, you can feel dips going across this. Rarely does it get as severe as this picture over here, but that kind of shows you the kind of cupping that they're talking about. It's also called scalloping, so if you hear that term scalloping, I use them interchangeably, scalloping and cupping. Some people try to identify them differently, but uh, to me they're kind of all in the same uh, ballpark. What causes this is basically the tire is either bouncing up and down or it's shimmying side to side. And as it does that, it tends to wear a spot on the tire. Uh, some things that can cause it are, of course, one of the first things to check is an unbalanced tire. Make sure that you balance the tires or check the tire balance. You can have worn suspension uh, parts and steering parts like tie rods. Uh, you can have a bad shock. That's a common cause of this type of wear. Um, loose wheel bearings or anything that allows that tire to basically shift side to side or bounce up and down uh, can create scallop type of wear. You can see this tire uh, has some scalloping on it. You can see how it's worn in these spots down. In between that will be tread that's not worn. Uh, this tire has the tread is just about wore out, so it's more noticeable on this tire. Um, basically, think about a shock. As a shock is bad and it allows a tire to bounce up and down too much, it tends to put pressure on spots when it comes down on the road. When it comes down on the road, uh, it tends to wear away or road away faster uh, than the spots that don't come down on the road. Uh, again, it can be balance of the tire, it can be a shock. Um, you can even have where the tire is actually turning in and out, uh, basically scruffing a spot as it turns in and out on the tire. The only way to fix this is to replace it. Uh, it causes vibration problems. Uh, and needs to be replaced and the cause of it needs to be found and fixed. This is common on big trucks. A lot of people ask me about this and I call this cupping also. Uh, some people call it heel and toe wear. If you notice the knobs on the tire are uh, sloped, kind of sloped upward. You can see this side is round and smooth. This one comes up. You may even see a lip that looks similar to tire wear or toe wear. Uh, except it's front to back instead of in and out, side to side. Uh, tire cupping or heel and toe wear, this type of wear, I see it on big trucks where they have knobby tires. It can be caused by the same things that cause tire cupping. I'm thinking out of balance tires. When you have big truck tires, especially the knobby ones, off-road tires, they tend to get out of balance easier. It's harder to keep them in balance, uh, so you tend to have more of this type of wear. Um, you can also, like I said, have uh, worn suspension parts, shocks, things like that. Uh, one of the big things to do uh, when you see this type of wear is rotate the tires. Uh, a lot of times if you rotate it, uh, you won't have this problem as severe. You won't notice as much. It doesn't necessarily get rid of the problem, but it may be that if it's a, a shock or strut, that if you run all the tires around in a rotating pattern, uh, that this is less noticeable to you get a lot of miles on the tire. Uh, oftentimes you'll see that these are uh, the leading edge is rounded and the uh, back edge in the direction of rotation is kind of got a lip on it. Uh, so moving these tires around from front to rear uh, and side to side will help mitigate that and make it a lot better. Just make sure you don't have any worn parts or suspension problems. Spotty tire wear first thing I want to talk about in spotty tire wear is flat spots. Flat spots like this one, this is an extreme example. You can see the rest of the tread is good uh, and thick and the tread here is almost non-existent. 
One thing that's uh, commonly known for causing this flat spot is locking up the tires on the road. Now if you have ABS systems that shouldn't happen um, unless you're sliding sideways. Um, but again, uh, look at the ABS system, make sure it's working properly. Uh, and like I said, if a customer just over uh, stops so hard that it locked up, that's the type of wear that you'll see. It's just a flat spot. It may not be as severe as this one. You may not notice it until the tread gets thin and then you'll notice, hey, the tread's thinner in this spot than another. Um, this is going to cause a bad vibration. The uh, only way to get rid of that really is to replace the tire. Uh, it could, you know, sometimes you can have a broken belt or another anomaly in the tire that can cause a flat spot, but we'll talk a little bit about that later in this PowerPoint. Diagonal wear. There's one thing I want to stress about diagonal wear. There's a lot of different causes, but one of the big things I've seen a lot lately um, is improper rear toe, improper toe on the rear. Basically, the tire isn't pointing straight down the road on one side, so it tends to run off in the direction it's pointing and then slide back over in line. Run in the direction it's pointing and slide back over in line. Oops. So you'll see patterns repeating across the tire of these diagonal wear patterns. Um, again, anything that causes cupping can cause this. You can have tire separation problems with the belts inside, but the uh, thing I want you to remember on this is just think about the rear toe being out and don't forget to tell them have an alignment, have check their alignment. Uh, you can also balance the tires and replace any worn parts you have to, that you find. Tire wear indicators. These little bars, you'll see them on just about all tires. They tell you when the tire is worn out to an unsafe condition. Now that doesn't mean you're okay to drive one like this that hasn't worn down to the bars. Um, these bars are when the tire is absolutely can be run no longer and should be taken off the road. Some state inspections where they do uh, vehicle inspections won't uh, pass the car if these tread bars are all the way worn down. Uh, manufacturers recommend that you replace it long before it gets to this point because you're losing so much performance and the tire's dangerous anyway it's just not completely uh, you know to the point that you really shouldn't be driving. Um, these treads basically channel water away and prevent hydroplaning so when you get down low like this there's better chance that you'll hydroplane. we will see hydroplaning over here. Um, don't wait till it gets that bad go ahead and replace it. Those wear bars are 230 seconds tall, but most manufacturers recommend replacing when you get down to 430 seconds tread depth. So uh, when you're halfway down to those, you probably need to go ahead and start looking at replacing the tire. Measuring tread depth. Uh, this is a tread depth gauge. It goes uh, down in the tread of the tire, has a plunger that goes down. You can see the plunger over here in that slide. Uh, it has a flat spot that sits across the tread. The uh, scale, you basically put your thumb on it or finger on it up here and push it down till it bottoms out in the tread groove. And of course you're holding this across the top of the tread. Uh, then you read the scale, whatever's at the top of this little body cylinder. Uh, that's how, what your tread thickness is. You can see down here in this one um, the scale has numbers on it. It can be millimeters or 30 seconds of an inch is the two most common. Uh, most of them I've seen have both on it. Uh, it's a matter if your specs are in 30 seconds or in millimeters. Uh, you can tell what the tread depth is of the car. Uh, check it several places around the tire and make sure that it's even. Here's a tried and true method of measuring tread depth. Um, old timers used to talk about a penny. Uh, put a penny in it. If you can see Lincoln's head, it's bad. You need new tires. Um, and the reason being was Lincoln's head used to be about the same distance from the edge of the penny as the height of those tread wear bars. So you could stick a penny in and tell when you were down to 230 seconds. Now again, 230 seconds is basically when you shouldn't be driving the car anymore. You should stop and uh, immediately get new tires. 
Uh, so that's not really safe. The tires are degraded in performance quite a bit before that. So most manufacturers recommend when you start getting below 430 seconds that you should replace your tires or start looking to replace your tires. Uh, now we use a quarter because the head of George Washington on the quarter is about 430 seconds from the edge. So basically I just placed George Washington down in there upside down and if I can see any of the top of his head uh, I am below 430 seconds and I need to, to buy new tires. Next section is tire damage. A couple of things you'll see is a bulge on the tire. There's several different bulges. One of them is a sidewall bulge. Uh, when you see this, uh, it's a good chance that you have a bad tire. Now, it could have been caused by two things. One is a manufacturer's defect, and the other is a uh, road damage. You hit something in the road, a pothole, uh, a curb, something like that. And basically, there's cords, fabric cords and steel cords in these uh, sidewalls, and you basically mash that down and broke some of those cords and the tires being allowed to bulge out instead of being held in. So when you see this, the tire is not safe. It's potentially dangerous. You may be driving on it, but you really need to get a, a new tire as soon as possible. Sometimes an inner liner will leak and cause something similar to this where air gets in under the outer rubber layer and puffs it up. Uh, but either way, you shouldn't be buying the tire or driving the tire. Uh, you should get a new tire immediately. Here's another bulge, and this one's in the tread. Uh, usually I tell people it's a, a bad tire, but it's a bad belt or a separated belt, shifted belt, some people call it. You can see the bulge on the top of the tread. Uh, there's radial belts that go around this tire, and you'll see them. The edges are kind of along right in this area around these uh, tread grooves and basically that sh has broken, the edge of it is broken or it's shifted uh, and again you see this a lot in cheaper tires because of manufacturer defects especially when they get a little age on them um, and you also can have it happen again just like the uh, sidewall, uh, sidewall budge, bulge when you hit something uh, like a curb or a pothole so this is dangerous you don't want to replace it or don't want to use it, you want to replace it. One thing I can tell you when you see this, and this is a common feeling, um, waddle like a duck, I call that. When you're in a parking lot going at slow speeds, uh, sometimes this tread will kind of zigzag where that uh, is. You can kind of see it curves a little bit. Sometimes it curves out in. Um, when that belt shifts like that, it tends to waddle. Um, and you'll feel it in the back. You'll feel it like your tail's walk kind of waddling back and forth like a duck. Um, you get faster, you don't notice as much. Same thing uh, uh, when it's on the front, you tend to feel it in the steering wheel and in the car. You feel it kind of going back and forth and your steering wheel may be kind of uh, bobbing back and forth as you go. And again, at higher speeds, it tends to go away. Broken beads. I've seen a couple of these, two, three, and 25 years I've been teaching. Um, and it's usually caused by improper tire installation or removal. Um, this bead, which is this part that sits on the wheel and fastens it tightly, uh, seals it tightly to the rim, uh, has steel cords in it. Those cords run around inside that rubber. Well, they don't stretch. So when you take a tire off, you actually have to drop one side of the tire into something called the uh, drop center and then lift the other side up over the rim lip. So it's basically drop this down in the center and shift it over and then lift the other side up and over the rim. Uh, what happens is uh, with a tire machine is people get it bound up. They try to stretch it off. Uh, you basically cannot leave this bead on one side of the, the bead seat and try to expect the machine to stretch the tire over or it breaks the belts. Um, when you see this in this little outcropping here, you pretty much know that you broke a belt uh, and the bead, broke the bead. So the only thing to do here is replace it and just learn how to install the tire properly and use the drop center. 
This is something I want to put, uh, talk about because I get a lot of questions about this. A lot of people worried if you look on forums and uh, on the internet and do some searches, you'll see a lot of people have questions about it. A lot of different answers, some of them good, some of them bad. Um, but this really needs to be addressed uh, so you know kind of when to not worry and when to uh, have some concern. Okay, This is a typical sidewall indention on a tire. Um, radial tires have fabric belts and cords that run radially around the tire, so around like this. Um, those belts actually are overlapped at certain spots, so you tend to see this. So you may see it overlapped. Um, you may see them buttoned together. That's usually the joint where they're joined together, the two, two belts. So you will tend to see some indention there. Uh, it's not usually anything to worry about. Um, you tend to see it in truck tires and taller tires a little more, like uh, trailer tires, just because the sidewall's taller and it's more noticeable. You can see it in passenger cars too. Um, one good thing about it is uh, it's nothing to worry about and uh, nothing to, for the customer to be concerned with. So just tell them it's okay uh, not to worry about it. Usually those sidewall indentions, a good way to know if it's something normal, is they're usually about three, sometimes less or more, around the tire. So if you see three evenly spaced indentions on your tire, you probably are looking at regular tire, uh, sidewall indentions and it's nothing to be concerned about. They may be worse when the tire is first put on or it's cold. Um, once you drive the car and get the tire hot, they tend to disappear and aren't as noticeable. Um, and again, higher air pressure like you see in some truck tires will make them more noticeable and just anything with a taller sidewall may make it more noticeable um, and the customer may ask you about it and it is perfectly normal. It's nothing to worry about. Now there is something to worry about uh, and that's a protrusion. Uh, if you look at this, this indentation uh, on this wheel uh, is normal. That's what I call a radial tire indentation and there's probably more than one across there. Uh, it's not anything to worry about and they can uh, can uh, feel safe that their tire isn't going to blow on them. Now on the left you'll see uh, a sidewall protrusion. Protrusion is just like we said before, it's damaged tire. It's either a manufactured defect or it was caused by some sort of road damage. Um, the belts or cords that are in the side um, where these are overlapped and that's just a, a gap or where they're on top of each other, uh, this is actually where those have broken and allowed the tire to bulge out. So anytime you see the tire bulge out on the side, that's a bad tire and really needs to be replaced. That's not safe, that's potentially dangerous. So uh, replace bulges Indentations like this usually are harmless. Here's a good example of protrusion. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about it because this is what you don't want to have. Anytime the tire bulges out, that's probably time for replacement. Um, it's basically where these belts have broken. Uh, if this were indentations across through here, and there were two or three, you wouldn't worry about it. But this one's actually protruding out. Anytime it protrudes out, so when you have protrusion, that's when you want to make sure that you replace your tire and recommend replacement for the customer. And that's it for my presentation. I thank you for watching, and hopefully you learned something about tires.